Okay, um, and then I wanted to update the board. As you see in the board book, we have a resolution around building uh, naming for exterior uh, naming on the buildings. Um, we've had a team of people who've done an extensive amount of work to get to this recommendation in front of the board, and I thought it was important that you understood uh, a little bit of information behind that request and how these names came forward. So I've asked Pat Argadellis to represent that team's work and just share a brief overview with you um, and provide an opportunity for you to ask questions. But also importantly, at the end of the presentation, we have some options of consideration that we need some guidance from the board to help direct from a budgeting perspective as well for this project. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Sutter. Good evening. Um, as Dr. Sutter said, uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to be presenting uh, the work that we've completed with regard to uh, uh, naming our building exteriors. So as we began this project, uh, we realized that there were um, already a couple of projects underway. So we were in the process, uh, and still are in the process of completing our master plan exterior wayfinding signage. Uh, the master plan opened up some new opportunities for naming internal facilities. Uh, the board approved the Cafe Willow name as well as Lancer Zone for the campus bookstore. Uh, we currently have a neighborhoods project underway, which is uh, environmental graphics um, across all three campuses. Uh, and we were exploring uh, uh, fundraising opportunities for uh, building naming. So as we looked at this project, uh, Really, uh, the, whole, the project encompasses campus navigation as well as um, an understanding of the identity of our buildings. So we had three objectives uh, as we began the project. Uh, the first is really the building letter uh, for wayfinding and emergency response. Uh, functional identity, really uh, defining what goes on, what is the usage in our uh, buildings. And then donor names or rec recognition, um, providing for fundraising opportunities. So the approach that we took again was uh, defining our um, defining our objectives, seeking uh, input from the college community, and then making recommendations as we are uh, coming to you tonight. So the first item that we started with was really putting the pieces in place. Uh, so you'll, uh, you'll see tonight we have some proposed revisions for the first three for policy 916. We have procedures that are really the guidelines for naming our buildings. The work that we've done to this point uh, is kind of shown on this slide right here. We initiated our project in September of 2019 uh, with policy 916 and the procedures to start it off. Uh, we then met as the Aesthetics Task Force and developed a, uh, some functional names to start with. We took those functional names and worked with IEPR uh, to develop a college survey that went out to faculty and staff. Uh, so respondents could either um, accept uh, or reject the names that were proposed. Um, they could also provide feedback as well as propose a new name. So we were lucky enough to get about a 22% response rate, uh, but moreover, uh, the overarching theme was that the campus community uh, recommended that we meet with the area stakeholders for further refinement of the building names, which we did over the, over the next uh, two months. We met with area stakeholders to really get a sense of uh, the purpose of the buildings uh, and were able to refine those names. We took those names then to the campus community um, for further input and information and uh, presented our findings or our, uh, a list of names to the college leadership team in January. Uh, in that meeting, we, uh, we got some great input and again made some changes uh, so that we're uh, in the resolution tonight where suggesting uh, a list of building names. And we'll go through those really quickly. Uh, across the Grace Lake campus, uh, Building A, Science, Advanced Technologies. Building B, Welcome Center, Student Services. You'll notice that Building C is not listed because there's no exterior walls. Uh, building D, Art, Health Sciences. E, Police, Foundation, Workforce, and Professional Development. Uh, building 7 will become Building F. 
uh, which is Athletics Fitness Center, Building H, Horticulture, Campus Farms. Building 12 will become Building G, Automotive Technology, Collision Repair. L is Library. P, Performing Arts with a donor name of the James Lumber Center. T, Business Engineering Technology. Building 4 will become Building K, uh, Adult Education, ESL. Uh, again, as we met with the internal uh, stakeholders for uh, Building 4, uh, they suggested that uh, due to their student base that we also pr uh, have uh, a second line in the name uh, where, uh, uh, that's in Spanish. Uh, building 13 storage and Building 15 grounds department. So on the South Lake campus, we met with the South Lake user group. Um, and with uh, uh, input from them and additional input from the college leadership team, uh, Building V is Welcome Center Student Services, again, to provide that consistency across all campuses. Building R, Wellness Health Science. Uh, the new CDB building will be named at a later date. We'll be proposing a name at the later date once it's completed. We met with the Lakeshore campus, the Lakeshore Core Group, um, and had some interesting conversations. Uh, the Lakeshore Core Group felt that because the uh, Lakeshore campus is an urban campus, that it should be treated differently. And rather than having building letters, uh, we utilize the addresses, which uh, kind of falls in line with um, uh, like campus navigation, but also for emergency response. So rather than letters, we're proposing for the Lakeshore campus the um, addresses. Uh, additionally, in our meeting with the Lakeshore Core Group, they felt that it was too early to really provide functional names, uh, that we should wait until the completion of the um, CDB building and, and, and until uh, pro academic programming is finished. Oops, sorry. Um, to give you an example of kind of what this all looks like, uh, the James Lumber Center is a good example. We have building P, which is um, our letter for wayfinding and emergency response. We have our functional name of performing arts, and we have our donor name for uh, the James Lumber Center. In addition, we wanted to make sure that we provided an option uh, for remembrance or recognition. So we have provided an example of a re uh, remembrance plaque. So the Esper A. Peterson Reading Room uh, is an option that can tell that story of that influential person or that donor uh, without putting that name on the outside of a building. So as we began the project, uh, the, bid, the original bid documents were for $250,000, which was really only the letter on the buildings across the campuses. Um, so uh, we were able to achieve uh, surplus funds of almost $100,000, which left a deficit of about $155,000. In order to uh, uh, move forward with letter, functional name, and a donor name on the buildings at the Grace Lake campus, we're looking, uh, we would need approximately an additional $100,000. In order to complete the same work across all campuses, uh, we'd be looking for uh, $360,000. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we compiled three options for the board uh, to review. Um, we're looking for guidance as we plan for uh, plan resources for the upcoming budget cycle. Um, and it's important to note uh, as we go through this, uh, option one is really only solves the Grace Lake campus. So it's the uh, the building name and the functional name uh, at Grays Lake. Option number two provides for signage across all campus locations. Um, and again, important to note is that our South Lake and Lakeshore campuses do not have updated branding. So they're still, they still have the old branding. And option number three encompasses uh, option one and two, as well as the monument signs for the South Lake and Lakeshore campus. <coughs> Uh, should we uh, achieve approval and funding, uh, we would uh, shoot towards uh, installation beginning in the summer of 2020. And lastly, I just want to thank our, our CLC community and all those that had input and feedback. Uh, it was a great project and a great body of work, and I'm thankful to have been a part of it. Questions? Do you want the options back up so that this can 
they have comments about that. Um, and Ken, I don't know if you want to make a comment about funding. Yeah, I'd just like to point out, back in September when we approved uh, the use of available resources from prior year surplus, we held back about $1.2 million and we didn't commit waiting for projects for this spring. So depending on which option the, the board approved, uh, we would be bringing back a, a board action item that would be using those funds to, uh, to address the need. Can you tell us what the monument signs are? I was are? just going to ask that. Yeah, so at the main entrances for uh, the South Lakes, the easy one, if you go in the main entrance, there's a big, bright, shiny sign. And here on Washington Street, we have a sign where we can do rotating messages. Um, we don't have such a sign at South Lake, or it's outdated. It has the old logo. Um, and then at Lakeshore, the old sign doesn't allow us to do the same graphics and representation. It's up on the building um, at a great one on Genesee. So it, it limits us in terms of what we can advertise at that location. So it's it's the main communication uh, source. So we just thought as we address this project, let's address all the campuses, let's address all the exterior needs. And while we're there, let's also take care of those old monument signs. The technology is out of date. It's very difficult for communications to keep them properly updated. Yeah, they serve to be so light for time to be uh, refreshed. So I would certainly advocate for option three. At the very least, option two, I think we have to have equity uh, between all three of our building locations, our campus locations. So for to me, uh, that's one that I would kind of fall on the sword for. It. At the very least, option two, but my preference would be option three. I agree with you. We're going through this process. Why have a brand new building without having that new sign? This is the time to do it. I know they're expensive. Um, but it, it really is a value statement, I think, across our campus locations, and if we can find the money for it. I also would wonder if maybe, especially for the, um, the Lakeshore campus, if we might be able to shave off some of those dollars from the overall project as we move um, to completion, you never know. It might also be another uh, naming uh, donation uh, possibility. That's an attractive piece for donors at times, so I'm sure you're already considering that. Um, and you're saying that we, we have funds that Correct. were set aside that are available right now. Correct. When we brought the uh, the plan forward in, back in September and then the board item, we noted what was available that we were going to bring back for this spring. So the, one of the recommended items for that money would be to fund uh, up to option three. I think if we're going to continue to update the look and feel of the college and also make us equitable on all three campuses, option three is the way to go. Um, Obviously, we, we don't want to be behind the technology. We want to get in front of the technology. And especially with the students coming up nowadays having been raised with all the technology and everything, the, you know, those kinds of looks and feels are going to be important to them. I'd, um, I'd like to echo the remarks. I think it's very important. That's, uh, that's our face. And uh, the, the consistency across the county as we try and bring the campuses together and link them together in the public's mind. Our awareness of it is, I think it's very important. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, tell me how it would work with the TBA. I mean, if we're going to, would that money be put aside until we know what we're going to be doing uh, with those buildings? And then... It would just say yeah, I think right now um, it's very confusing at the Lakeshore campus just with the addresses because we don't identify the addresses very well on the buildings. Um, okay. So I think at a minimum, having the, the numbers on the buildings will help solve some, some of that students trying to navigate through that campus. And then, and then as we know, we can add on to that underneath the ad. That would be all in under consideration. And then with donors... Um, that also would be the same process then, and is the foundation, they must be updating because they, they had, I, I think, some policy regarding donations for naming buildings. I work closely with Kurt Peterson to make sure that we re made recommendations on policy and procedures that we aligned our documents together. Okay. Yeah, so the revised policy reflects the work that Ken and Kurt have done so that we are consistently utilizing donor fundraising across all locations. But more clearly spelling it out on our side, the, yeah. the foundation's policies were crystal clear. It was our policies that seemed to be kind of silent. Mm -hmm. so we're trying to bring them both up to the same level. Okay. Other comments? Hey, 
I have one, thank you, Pat. Thank you. I have one final, I want to end on a good note, um, and that's a rounded moment. So we're approaching 10-day census of the spring semester, and I just want to extend my appreciation to the whole college team because it has been after significant efforts to implement strategies for pipeline development, such as the college transitions coach pilot, building out dual credit, our workforce equity initiative grant, program expansions, and the retention <coughs> strategies, including more student-friendly scheduling and the board's recent approval to revise the drop for non-payment policy, among other things. I'm pleased to share that we have a positive shift in enrollment. As of this morning, credit hours and FTE are up 1.7% overall. Specifically, dual credit is up 43.4%, and vocational is up 9.7%. College level is the best it's been in a couple of years. It's at a minus 0.3, so we do still have work to do. However, we're moving in the right direction. Other highlights, the Lakeshore campus credit hours are up 7.6%. Online is up 6.1%, while the Grace Lake campus is at a minus 2.2 and the South Lake campus are at minus 10. So we'll continue to stretch our strategies across all locations. A couple of detailed notes. Uh, <coughs> due to the policy change that the board approved uh, last December or last fall and the increased flexibility and drop for non-payment, we successfully retained more students from fall to spring comparing a 6.5% drop rate to a 5.8% drop rate this current month. The college transitions coach pilot that we're doing with Mundelein has resulted in both an increased number of prospects and an increased number of applications, 86 additional applications to date, um, and we're just part way through the year. So, as well as an increased yield on those numbers as well. So data is demonstrating that the investments the board has supported and the strategies our team is implementing are moving our enrollments in the right direction. So thank you very much. And then finally, at your places, you have cups from our kickoff. You have shoelaces in shoelaces. these cups. The shoelaces are to represent the 50-mile challenge that I will be oh, nice. um, engaging in in May to create awareness around um, student emergency fund needs. So I'm walking in the shoes of students. Well, really my own shoes. <laughs> walking a mile in their shoes as best I can. Um, but we will be raising <coughs> funds for the student emergency fund um, in that process. How much time do you have to walk the Three days. Yes. Anyone is welcome to join me. <laughs> <laughs> and you are able to have a donations and in lieu of walking. Um, but thank you, and that concludes my report.